Imagine being less interested in sex because inside of yourself, you feel a warm, calm groundedness that makes you feel whole and complete. Imagine being more psychologically stable and more deeply compassionate to everyone and everything because you've gripped your desire by the balls and have exercised control over your own mind. But more than this, the deeper effect of brahmacharya that I want to share with you is that you become far more awake and far more loving. And this, in the context of sex and relationships, changes everything for you. The first thing that happens is you're able to see reality so clearly. Truths just reveal themselves to you. For example, it becomes immediately obvious to you that drawing love or fulfillment from within yourself is a far deeper reward than physical sex could ever be. And this is because love that comes from the outside is finite, conditional, limited and temporary. Whereas the love that you receive from the inside directly from God with Brahmacharya is infinite, unconditional and unlimited. This is a basic principle within practically all spiritual traditions that the highest love is accessible to you only by looking within. And ultimately, it is a sign of an incredibly spiritually developed person if you are able to first know and then find the love and fulfillment that you seek, not in the external world, but within your own heart. This is the sign of an awakened person. This is the sign of someone who knows and who is the truth. Brahmacharya, which by the way, I would define as the right use of one's energy or moderation of one's senses, is something that you have to be ready for. Let's imagine for a second that you're not quite ready to take this on. Perhaps you need to burn through some karma. Perhaps you need to have sex, engage with sex, so that you can realize that it is not the answer. And if you do this, you will experience this one beautiful, inevitable thing that we are all very familiar with, and that is suffering. <laughs> As the great sage Swami Vivekananda said, desires of the body bring only momentary satisfaction and endless suffering. It is like drinking a cup of which the surface layer is nectar, while underneath all is poison. The great thing about this quote is how it touches upon the illusion of desire, how desire seems as though it would produce a deep love or fulfillment, but really it does nothing for you other than temporarily satisfy the mind and senses, which of course is just playing the game of suffering. With Brahmacharya, the biggest weight will be lifted off of your shoulders when you arrive at a point in your path where you realize selfish sexual desire is not a source of true fulfillment, but rather a source of tremendous suffering. In fact, if we go deeper with this, what we can learn is that pleasure is the suffering itself. Because when engaging in pleasure, at what point are you not already suffering? This is not a logical thing. It's very intuitive. It is your intuition that tells you that pleasure must collapse into suffering because there is no difference between the action and the result. These things are one, just as everything is. Likewise, pleasure must be suffering because it happens for and within the ego. And the ego is the one thing that you must let go of on this path to find liberation. So arrange your life in such a way that you are serving the God within and not the ego. If you are done playing this game of suffering, a game which cannot be won, and you found yourself on this path of Brahmacharya, let me tell you about what kind of things can happen to you.
One thing that can happen to you is when you approach and talk to really beautiful women, you are not focused on their looks as you once were. You can appreciate them, but they don't arouse anything in you. With brahmacharya, you are no longer using the mind, which is a lens of selfish desire to look through and perceive reality. You are using the heart, which in other words is to look through no lens at all or to have no perspective at all. Because it is once you abandon all perspectives, biases and preferences that you are left with the one fundamental aspect of reality, which is unconditional love. This means when a woman is stood in front of you, what you see is the divine feminine. You see beauty and you see elegance. And this is the biggest relief for you. Because finally, you're not looking to get something from this person. You just see God. You just see yourself. It is freedom that you gain when you swap out the mind, a cloudy, distorted lens. For the heart, a complete and abundant universal love. Another way that Brahmacharya changes things for you is you don't feel fear, at least not as much as you once did. Because fear comes from wanting and desiring. With Brahmacharya, you take a step back. You become non-attached to the things around you and you turn your mind in on itself toward the divinity that lies within. This means the center of yourself is God and not mind or ego. Likewise, fear is your mind's survival mechanism to help protect you in the world. And with practicing Brahmacharya, you are moving on from the worldly game of survival. And this means that you no longer really need the fear because fear is part of the ego, part of the illusory self, that which you are transcending as you step into your God self, which is complete formless consciousness. But don't expect this to be easy whatsoever. It is not. It is probably the most difficult and most counterintuitive thing that you could possibly try and do whilst you're alive. So be wise and tread carefully on this path. So if you are dissatisfied with physical, material pleasure, and you have seen that exciting or arousing the senses is just a fleeting and dissatisfactory thing, open your mind to brahmacharya. You don't have to be celibate. You just have to take responsibility for your energy and for your consciousness. And zooming out here, this is completely inevitable for you on this path, because really it's just a part of your natural evolution to slowly transcend the need for external satisfaction, especially sexual satisfaction that can drain you of your essence, of your life force. Begin to value brahmacharya very high in your life, higher than worldly pleasures and easy sexual pleasure. And go even further with this and open your mind to the possibility that becoming a love, becoming an embodiment of the universe could be an even greater pleasure than sexual indulgence. And if you're not sure, try it. And you will find that purifying yourself and purifying your spirit will leave you with a deeper peace and a deeper contentment than anything else you're going to be doing in life. So try it, commit to it, and become the self, the higher self, that you truly are. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like more, please do subscribe.